My name is Ekol Mensa, E-K-O-W-M-E-N-S-A-H. It is important to me that you remember my name. Don't call me sir, don't call me speaker, don't call me teacher, don't even call me a friend. Call me Echo Mensa, because the name matters to me. Are we good? All right, so I'm supposed to talk about taking L out of play. Taking L out of play. And it's supposed to be bordered on entrepreneurship. Okay, so I'll take it a bit slow. Um, in the recent past, I've been doing a lot of training and teaching. So whenever I take the mic to do a public speaking session, I still find myself teaching and training. So pardon me if I ask you to do some work. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to write down, for those of you who have pens and papers, and for those of you who don't, I'm sure you have a phone with the notes. So write down the things that you do that you consider playing. How do you play? What do you do? Or in other words, I could use a word that all of you are familiar with. What is your hobby? What are the things that you love to do? That if somebody was paying you today, that is what you would spend the rest of your life doing. You probably have made no money doing it, but you love doing that more than anything. In fact, you love doing it more than going to school. You love doing it more than anything. If it is singing, even if it is just talking, if it's sleeping, is watching TV, whatever you love to do, write it down. And for those of you that don't have one, you can write as many as you want. I'll give you just 30 seconds to do this. What are your hobbies? What are the things that you love to do? Okay, because now my work is to teach you how to take the L out of the play. When you take L out of play, what do you get? Pay. So how do you get paid for having fun? That's my theme. Everybody likes to have fun, right? Who doesn't like to have fun? Yeah, we have some very zealous entrepreneurs who don't have fun at all. All they do is work. And I'm pointing some people. But the work is actually fun. You see, that's the thing. And that is where you are actually living and not just surviving. Some of you, you are young, you get to the point where you find yourself surviving and not leaving. You see, but you have to live. Because there's a reason why you were brought on this earth. And I'm not going to talk about purpose, destiny, and all that. I'm sure some of you have heard it over and over again. I'm come to talk about how do you get paid for having fun? Okay? And if you are finished writing your hobbies, how many of you believe that what you've written down is what is going to make you the next millionaire? Oh, you do. So you can go home now. I'm going to use a case study, a commercial photo, or a commercial photography. This thing started on the 28th of October, less than a month ago. Actually, a bit earlier, like a week before, but that one was just me learning to use the camera. So I'm going to t tell you about my photography journey. And out of that, we are going to take the lessons, and then you would know how to get paid for having fun. So for a long time, I have liked photography, okay, taking pictures. People take pictures, and I watch them, and when I see the final work, I'm like, I can do better. You know how it is, right? Some of you see people doing things, and you won't do it all, but you believe in your heart that you can do better. How many of you have gone through that before? Yeah, stop believing and start doing. Because you see, in your mind, you could do better, but if you never do it, nobody would know. Do you understand? When you see me talking, you sit down and like, oh, ah, so is this is the one that is on the poster. I mean, I can do better. Some of you even believe you can do better than Otabel, 
and all those renowned speakers. And there's nothing wrong with it. The only difference is, are you going to do it? Because you see, you're not the one that determines whether you're doing better. It is the beneficiary of your gifts and doings. The people that you are doing the thing for, they will determine whether you're doing it better or not. So for a long time, I've wanted to do pictures, videos. I like visuals. And some of you might not know, but I do graphic designs. In fact, every design you see about Tano, everything, I do them myself. The Tano logo, everything. I do my own designs. So I have had that skill in graphic designing for a while, but I wanted to do something about photography. So a month ago, I decided to start my photography journey because then I, I had saved enough money to get the equipment, you see. So then when the equipment arrived, I decided to start taking pictures. Now, remember, it, it's, even now, it's not a business. It's just me having fun. So I do them only on Saturdays and sometimes on Sundays when I have permission from my wife to go shoot. So on Saturdays, I go out there and I take almost everything. Everything I see that is nice, I take pictures of it. Now, what happened was I decided to create a Facebook page and an Instagram page. Both of them are free. There's a lot of echo in this thing. Can you reduce it for me, please? There's too much echo. Okay, thank you. So Instagram is free, right? Who has ever paid for Instagram? If you have ever paid to have an account on Instagram, let me see your hand. Nobody. What about Facebook? Nobody. So I started taking the pictures. Before that, I went on YouTube, as most of us do, to learn about photography. Here is my camera in my hand with my YouTube and my internet going through lessons in photography. But the thing is, there's a difference between doing and learning. Please take the nuggets as we go along. You can sit in class for years, but there's always a difference when you start doing it. I remember this when I wanted to learn how to ride a bicycle. They were teaching me how to ride a bicycle in a very confined environment. And I wasn't getting it because I was afraid of falling. But the day that I was able to take the bicycle out of my house, I was able to explore it without the fear of falling or failing. And that was the day I was able to ride the bicycle. Now, the same thing happened when I had the camera in my hand and was going through the various lessons on YouTube. At that point, I was acquiring what? Knowledge. Okay, so if you want to take the L out of the play, the first things you have to do is to acquire knowledge. Now, everything you've written down, somebody is probably doing it and making money out of it. Everything. And when I say this, people ask me, what about sleeping? Do people make money from sleeping? Do they? Oh, they do. Because I know there are sleeping tablets, right? And if they want to test it, who better to test it on people that can actually sleep? So they compare the way you sleep naturally to the way you sleep when you are induced. And that makes them money. But you don't know. So you never make money. So knowledge acquisition is the first thing. You learn before you what? Earn. Write it down. You learn before you earn. Some of you want money, but you don't know anything. The more you know, the better you do. But for me, the more you practice, the better you become. The more you know, the better you do. The more you practice, the better you become. You can write that down as well. Now, I was knowing, but I wasn't doing. So then, a lot of the things were strange to me. Shutter speed, air stop, aperture. All those things were strange because this is me trying to self-teach. Okay? So I spent a whole Saturday learning photography for my own good. I didn't get it. Because all the pictures I took of my home and my wife were dark. Very black. And honestly, by 11 p.m., I was almost giving up. What is this? Everybody takes pictures and it comes nice. Me, I take pictures, it doesn't come nice. And you know, I wanted to do it well, so I didn't want to use the auto mood. 
So I use auto, it comes nice, and then I put it on manual, and it comes dark. And they were teaching me, I was learning it, but I wasn't getting it. But one thing that they, keep, they kept insisting was, go out there and what? Take pictures. So the following Saturday, and that's another thing, you have to make time to build the requisite skills you need to be able to take the L out of the play. It is not just about knowing, but it's about doing. When you acquire knowledge, you know. When you apply the knowledge, you build what we call skills. Okay, it's a lot I'm going to throw at you, but I hope you're able to, because I don't have a presentation. So follow me. When you acquire knowledge, you know. When you start applying the knowledge, you have skill. It is the skills that bring you money, not the knowledge alone. Because I could be a professor, but if I don't know how to teach or write theses or supervise publications, I am a useless professor. You know that. I have the degree, but I don't know what it takes to actually start making money from the knowledge I have acquired. And most of you, I see you in uniforms and all that. You've gone to school. You've acquired a certain level of knowledge. But you will not be paid because you have that knowledge. You'll be paid because you know how to apply the knowledge. And application of knowledge is called what? Skill. Now, I just pause here and ask you something most of you know. You know what they say, that time is what? Equals to money. Is it true? How many of you know that? You guys are too dull. What's happening? You are youth. Time is equal to what? Or popularly known as time is money. Randy, it's true, right? It's not true. Randy, you and I know time is not money. Because some of you are actually, everybody here has 24 hours. How come you don't have 24 CDs every hour that you have? Like automatically, at the end of spending the time, you should have money. That's what it means. If they say time is money, it means as long as you have time, you should have money. But it's not true, right? So this is what I say. Time plus something gives you money. What is that thing? Applied knowledge, which is what? Oh, you are getting it. Clap for yourselves. Time plus skills gives you the money. Because, you see, when you're applying the knowledge within a certain time frame, you earn money by doing it for people who can pay. So the equation, is, the equation is not complete yet, but for now, take it as time plus money is equal to, time plus scale is equal to what? Money. So this is me, one week, one Saturday of knowledge acquisition. I couldn't figure it out. Okay? But the next Saturday, there was um, this thing called Joy FM Old School Reunion. So I saw it as an opportunity to go and take what? Pictures. So I went there with my camera. I went way early. I didn't even know it was in the evening. I went in the morning. And the only thing I could take was the setup. So I'll just show you some of the pictures I took. And don't forget, this is me having learned how to use a camera but not knowing how to do it. But then I went out there to start practicing. I told you practicing makes you become what? It makes you... What? Better, not perfect. There's no perfection. All right, so I'll just show you. So this is my house. This was the first picture I took on Saturday. And this was on auto. <laughs> when you have a good camera and you put it on auto, it comes out nice. But the professionals will know that there's a difference. Okay, so I'll just show you. So this is my house. And this was the, I think, 50th picture I took. <laughs> I should show you some of the... The ones before this one, they were all dark. But this was the nicest. So I went out there and started taking pictures. When I went to the office the next day, I saw this construction site. Okay, this is from the Ridge area. So I stood in, at the office and took the construction site from down. And of course, it came out nice, right? And you wouldn't think that this is someone who has held the camera for the first time, taking pictures. You see, nobody cares how long you've done it, as long as you can do it well. Nobody cares. Experience is good, but if you can deliver, it's better. All right? So then this is me taking shots of my office. And you know this area, right? This is the Echo Bank. Trust me, at this point, I, I still don't know what I'm doing. 
but the pictures seem to be coming out nice. And this is you having a hobby that you are good at. Some of you know how to cook. People taste your food and they like it. It's an indication that, that you can take the L out of the play. You are playing by cooking, but people like your food. If they start patronizing it, they are paying you for it. So it is coming out well. So then I took the first picture. This is Fidelity Bank, opposite my office. My office is at the shipper's house. So I just stood there, and you know, I learned about angles. You know, there's a certain angle that you take, and the sky becomes the background. This is a complete YouTube tutorial. And I used it, and it was good. So this is me applying the knowledge I learned the week before. Remember, I hope you are following. So I went down like this. And all the security men and the people coming with my suit and everything and a camera, taking my pictures. I took about 16 pictures and this came out nice. Nobody cares how many times you've done it as long as you're doing it well. Don't forget that. Practice, practice, practice. So then, I continued. This one is the, the Ghana reunion. Actually, the projector is dark. My pictures are pretty better now. <laughs> so... This is the Ghana Reunion building. I was standing on the seventh floor of the shipper's house, and then I took, so I went, went to the office early, like 6.30, just before the sun was rising, just to take pictures and then to perfect my photography. I'm just three weeks old. I'm still not perfect. So Ghana Reunion building, I'll just take you through till I got to. So these are all pictures I took the day before my tutorial. Remember, I had spent a lot of time at home trying out the knowledge I was acquiring, and I wasn't getting it. But when I went out there and started practicing, and if you want to take the L out of play, practice. Practice. Because nobody will pay you for something that somebody who is known as a professional is doing, and then you who is just playing doing, nobody will pay you the same amount. Do you understand? So let's just go on. So these, uh, this picture came out nice. We were going for startup dialogues at um, Agbozome on the Aflower Road. And this is my team member. So I had this lens that I was using and I was trying that one to out. And, and trust me, these pictures are the, the result of thousands of other pictures that I've taken. I'm three weeks old in photography and I have over 1,000 pictures. And also the 1,000 pictures, I have barely 25 of them that are good. But nobody knows the rest that are not good. Nobody cares. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Because don't forget, it's play. See, the moment you, get, you start getting frustrated about something that you're doing, two things might have gone wrong. It's either you are copying it from someone, or your motive is wrong. So it's not play anymore. That is not you. Because you don't get frustrated by having fun. Nobody does. So if you're actually having fun, you shouldn't be frustrated. Over a thousand pictures, and these came out, and Prince can bear me witness. He always laughs at me. And Prince and Derek, where is Derek? Yeah, they're always laughing. But the fact is, the world only knows the ones that came out nice. All right, so, and this is the, and you see, when you know something, look for the opportunity to do it. You get it. The Bible says time and chance happen to all. Time is automatic, but chance mostly, you have to find it. You get it? And chance is all over us. If you can sing, what is preventing you from singing in church? Even singing here, singing in class, singing everywhere. And now because of social media, there's even life, life what? Life, Facebook live. You can sing now and the world will be looking at it. And people out there who think you are good enough will call you. Okay, and I'll tell you what is happening with my photography. Let me just show you a bit more. So this, you know Rama Brew, right? So I went for this TEDx Pintex woman. Of course, I had not been invited to come and speak. Uh, I had not been invited to come and take pictures. But of course, I'm, I have a camera. I like taking pictures. So when you see an opportunity, what do you do? You take pictures. So this is Rama Brew. I took a lot of pictures. And before I come to my rates, and this was because... So this was the morning after I started learning. So I was driving and I saw this cool thing and I took it. I didn't think it was good enough, but when I put it out there, people started liking it. Facebook is free, Instagram is free, Twitter is free. Put your play there. 
okay? And let people see that you can do it. So then I went on, on, on. Uh, this was my first picture. This is terrible. On Sunday of the Saturday. But it's nice because it's a baby. If it was Randy, I'm sure he would reject it. And this picture was not intended to come out like this. I saw this chandelier up there and I asked there. And I didn't know this woman. And there's one thing, trust me. Women are the best supporter of your dreams. Find the right women and they will push you for it. Randy Adelai, and he knows. Now this woman was just coming for Girl Empowered Meeting. I didn't know her anywhere. I had my camera in my hand. I knew I was an amateur and everything. I didn't even know how to do the setting and I still don't know it properly. I asked her, please, would you mind me taking pictures of you? Automatically, she went into a pose. <laughs> Automatically. And this pose, I didn't tell her because I, I, I don't know about poses yet. So there was a, this light up there and I asked her, can you look at the light? So the picture was originally from the light all the way to here. So you could see the blood distance in between. But then when I took it, this part came out very nice. And people would think I'm that good. But accidentally, I am being good. You understand? So then I edited it and then put it, and I still don't know how to edit pictures. I hear there's a program called Lights Room or something. I don't have that program yet, but as of now, I use Windows, Windows Photos. You know when you open the photo with window, there's edit, and there are the features there. So I go to edit, and then I go to filters. First enhance, second filter, and then the photo comes out well. So this is a result of Windows. And then this, so these are, this is Togo. All right, so long and short, and this is accidental, purely accidental. I didn't know what I was doing. The setting was wrong, but it came out nice. So when you are playing, don't be too hard on yourself. Because you see, it is likely that we look down on ourselves because this is not where we want to get to. But then the people that are willing to pay think we are good enough. Let that be a motivation for you to do a bit more. Do you understand? All right, so this is accidental. Now, I was there posting my, so this is filters. So let me go to this one. You see this picture? This is how it came. But I used the Windows photos and I got something like this. And people are liking it. Okay, my pictures were sent to a, an experienced photographer of five years. And he doubted that I am, I've done this for only three weeks. I know I'm not good yet, but I'm not bad too. So I'm in between. <laughs> okay? And I'm not a photographer. Please don't call me a photographer. I take pictures. Because when you call me a photographer, that's my career. Now it doesn't become play anymore. You understand? But after I put all these up on, on Instagram, then three people, one person said, where is your studio? I want to come with my family to take pictures. You see, when you're playing, and the playing is so good, people tell you the opportunities that are there to make money. So they sent me a message first on Facebook after posting some of these pictures. And they said, first one was, where's your studio? I want to come with my family to take pictures. I was like, okay, I'll get back to you on that. Because I don't have a studio. And then the second person was, I have a birthday coming up and I want you to come take me pictures. How much do you charge? And I wanted to show you the conversation. I was like, oh, wait a Oh, I should use this. Oh, sorry. It works? It doesn't work. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, the second person was, I have a birthday coming up, and I want you to shoot my pictures for me. Would you be able to do that? And I said, of course, why not? I'm not doing this to make money. Because I work hard, and I don't have any social life. Okay, so I decided that, okay, why don't I do something to have fun? And I took up the photography. So it's having fun. This is not what pays me. But if someone wants to pay me for it, why not? And I'm a Randy. I bought the equipment with money. I know I just want to have fun. But somebody has said, my birthday is coming up. Can you take me pictures? Would you say no? Hey, I didn't go marketing. But you see, the product I put out there is the one that is drawing the clients then my play is now becoming business. I'm removing the L from the play. So then I decided that, okay, since, so that was my third request to take pictures, and I didn't have any rates. 
So I went to Google. Internet is powerful, trust me. Before you go to a human being, make sure that you've gone to internet and disturbed it. Invest in internet because there's almost always everything there. So I went there and I looked for photography rates. So then I looked at a few, I liked it, and then I came up with my own rates. So this is my rates. <laughs> so I did my rate card. Of course, the rates card I saw on the internet were not as nice as this. But I decided to do my own rates. And you see, the moment start, people start calling you to do stuff for them, they, there may be the tendency that they would want to write a check for you in the name of the company you've put out there, which is Play. So my Facebook page is Ecomisa Photography. My Instagram is Ecomisa Photography. So somebody might give me a check in the name of Ecomisa Photography. So what do I do? I call my contacts at Register General, register Ecomisa Photography for me. Friday, it was done. I didn't intend to start making money from it. But if people want to pay me for it, why not? And you see, the good thing is that they would work with your time because they've seen that you are good. You understand? So then, I have registered a commercial photography. I have my rates card. It's not business. How else is business done? So I have my rates card. And then I said, okay, standard package. I don't know what standard package is. <laughs> I saw it on the internet. But that was in dollars. So the man wrote $150. I said, okay, no, I can't charge that. So let me just put $250 there. But every time I send the rate card, I said it's negotiable. Because I don't want them to. But you see, they came to me because they like the pictures. Don't forget that. You might be playing, but let people see it. Let people who can afford see it. Okay? And this is how a hobby becomes a business. You start doing it for people. Some of you like organizing. You want to do event management. You like organizing. You do everybody's party, funeral, birthday, baby shower. Everything anybody wants to do, you want to do it for them. But you're not packaging it enough to sell it. But the good thing is that if you're good at what you do, people will start calling you and making orders. So you need to be ready for it. Okay? So now the play that I started three weeks ago, I have two clients, and then I have a person that has signed me on to take all the pictures of their events. So now I have to get assistance. So those are my two assistants. It was just play. I never intended to make money, but you have to do it and do it well. And most importantly, you have to show people that you can do it. And then they are going to be the ones telling you the opportunities that are there to make money. In conclusion, I'll tell you one thing that I heard on Wednesday when we did a, the Rock Your World at AIT. There's a lady that said, made this statement, and I loved it. There's a difference between gold and gold-plated. When you're playing, learn the skills to it, no matter what you do. Because somebody can sing, and somebody sings, and he's paid 70,000 CDs. Another person sings, and he's paid $1 million. What is the difference between the three? Do you understand? So as much as you want to do something in this world, first of all, make sure it is fun. Because the moment it gets frustrating, it is not worth it anymore. Second of all, make sure you are building the requisite skills that makes you stand out. Because you're not the only person who takes pictures. You're not the only person who sings. You're not the only person who does events. So how do you do it in such a way that you are different? And the third is that make sure you are ready for the opportunities that come. Get the fundamentals right. If you need to register a company, register it. If you need to have an account, ready. nobody probably has paid you for it, but get ready for it. And the last is, there's a difference between gold and gold-plated. Don't be gold-plated. Don't be fake. Don't go telling people what you cannot do. And if you've made a mistake of telling them what you cannot do, start learning because everything can be learned. And the last thing is, you learn before you do what? You earn. Thank you very much. God bless you.